Hi everyone, Jeremy here, Modern Vitality. Chronic fatigue syndrome, or CFS-ME, it's a disorder that's characterized by a complete lack of energy, empty batteries, okay? No matter how much sleep you get, no matter what you eat, no matter if you exercise, doesn't matter. You can still have these bad days where you basically just, you're gassed, you can't do anything. People that have chronic fatigue syndrome often also have other symptoms besides just the debilitating fatigue. There can be brain fog, a lot can, can happen. It's multi-systematic, right? But one of the ones we're gonna talk about today are chronic pains, okay? These weird pains. So this video is all about how to help chronic pains with CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome. We're gonna take, as always, an expanded and counterintuitive approach to analyzing the pains and using that as information to figure out what your body is trying to tell you so that you can heal and get back to living your life. All right, let's get started. So we need to understand chronic pains. We need to figure out what our body is trying to tell us. That way we can start to navigate upward and outward the grips of mystery illness, all right? I know it's not fun. You know it's not fun, okay? Having mystery illness, complex chronic inflammatory conditions, all this stuff, it shrinks your world down. You gotta start saying no to all kinds of things you used to enjoy because you don't feel like you can rely on your body, okay? It's not fun to say, it's not, it doesn't make me happy to say that, but that's the, the truth of it from what I've observed, from the people I've worked with, from my own experiences. Once you start to lose faith in your body, you start saying no to all kinds of fun stuff, okay? No, thank you, I can't. No, not sure, can't. What if I have a flare? What if I crash, right? Better not to travel. Better not to go out on a restaurant trip with my best friends, right? None of this. Instead, we got to stay home and kind of just wait and hope we don't crash, okay? Too many variables. So we need to be able to re-expand our world and get back to living our life. And one of the best things to do is to have a structured plan where you know how to address your body from a whole systems perspective. I talk about that in other videos. I'm not gonna to go too deep into it in this one because in this one, we're focused on chronic pain and the information that we can get from chronic pains. So I should tell you in Eastern medicine, right, which is my background, I've got a very strong background in Eastern medicine, acupuncture, herbs, these kinds of things, Qigong, right? Where we're, we're looking at the body as an ecosystem. We're looking at the body as not just component parts, Okay, it's not just like fixing a car. Oh, something's wrong with my car. Oh yeah, you've got a bad valve here. Let's just take it out, put in a new one, right? We can't do that with our body. I can't just say, hey, yeah, your nervous system's fried. Like we need to get that out of here, order a spare. It doesn't work like that. We're a different kind of system. We're organic, we're living, we're complex. So we have to learn how to work with that system. And there are a lot of clues we can use. So I'm going to train you today. I'm going to give you an introduction to understanding chronic pains, and especially from an Eastern medicine perspective. Okay, there's a lot of um, historical richness to this where we can, we can use the human cultural heritage and we can start to apply it to our modern problems. In Eastern medicine, pain, generally pain is seen as an obstruction or a blockage. It's typically a sign that there's a problem. Okay, I know this isn't rocket science to say this. It's not a big epiphany, right? Pain is a sign of a problem. However, the epiphanies come when we start to follow that thread. If we say, okay, if it's a sign of a problem, how can we understand what, what problem it is? How can we understand what our body's asking for? So I wanna offer you this model that we've inherited through generations and generations of medical practice, which is to understand chronic pains in terms of how they feel, what the subjective sensations are, and then to understand the associated needs of the body that go with them, all right? Before I get to that, I should tell you, if you're struggling with complex chronic health conditions, you don't have to heal alone. You don't have to do this alone. We've got an awesome group. I started it a couple of years back. It's called Modern Vitality Solutions and Support. It's a chat group. We're off of big tech. It's just a private chat group. Also within the chat group, you've got like, I'm in there answering questions every single day. You've got a bunch of awesome people just like you that are at various stages of their, their healing path. Everybody's very kind, compassionate, bright, sophisticated. It's lovely, it's international. And then we also have a vault of interactive videos that I've compiled so that you can start doing the work and figuring out a lot about where you are, where you are on your journey, what you need to be doing, what you should be thinking of next, how to get a plan together. It's an awesome space. So I'd encourage you, it's free to apply. You can click the link below here in the description. I'll see your application. If it looks like you're a good fit, I'll get you in the group as soon as I can. It's a wonderful place to be. Even if you're introverted, even if you're shy, it's, it's great. You're in good company. There's a lot of introverts in the group, a lot of quiet folks. They just want to kind of mind their business and learn and, and heal. It doesn't have to be a, a whole big thing, right? So 
the link is there and um, you know, it can fill up. It's a small group, it can fill up and I'll try to get you in. If your application looks good and I think you know, you'd be a good fit, I'll try to get you in at least within like the next monthly cohort. Okay, I try not to make people wait too long, but I do keep the group small. So you can apply for a group and also subscribe to the channel if you'd like. That way you can see more helpful content like this video and get your mind filled up with new ideas for how to heal your body. Okay, so here we go. I wanna differentiate chronic pain versus acute pain. Okay, that's first. Chronic means long time, right? It's been happening a long time. Acute pain means it just started. So what I'm gonna tell you, this is the caveat here, is that this type of information analysis really works best on, a, on chronic pain. Acute pains are often very different. So for example, like if you just sprained your ankle, that's not necessarily your body trying to talk to you about how your digestive system's doing or your nervous system or whatever. That's that's just a, an orthopedic injury, okay? So we need to keep that. I've had questions in the past about that. No, that's different. I'm talking about chronic pains that are associated with inflammatory conditions, okay? That's that's where we're focusing here. Now, if you've been around my, my work at all, if you've been in my world, you know that I rely very heavily on a four-stage model, right? Four stages in order, to recover the body functions. And the first stage is immune system. Second stage, digestion. Third stage, neuroadrenal. Fourth stage, blood circulation. When we work on these systems in order, we get compounding results. When we go out of order, we get hit or miss results. Sometimes if you skip stages, you'll get this, you'll feel great for like a month and then all of a sudden the whole house of cards comes down and it's like flare up after flare up. Okay, there's a reason why it's too much to explain in this video. This would be a very long video if I got into all this. That's why I have a vault. That's why I have more videos on here on the channel. Like we can do this in depth elsewhere, but the, the main strategy you have to understand is that there is an order. There's a combination to how your body wants to be interacted with. And you start looking immune, digestive, neuroadrenal, blood circulation. All right, keep that in mind. Now, when we start to look at pains, right? Pain types, wow. Many people, okay, I'm gonna tell you something. Many people that I've met, when I tell them there's different types of pain, they say, what are you talking about? Pain is pain, okay? Pain is pain, it just hurts. And I say, well, what type of pain is it? I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about, it just hurts. Okay, that's the first step is to start feeling it, right? And I know it's scary, nobody wants to feel pain, right? But we have to actually like sit with it, lean into it and get some information from it. We're studying our body and pain is part of the deal. The body's communicating with your brain via your nervous system, and sometimes that signal is unpleasant, okay? That's pain. It's a sign of obstruction in Eastern medicine. We look at that as a blockage, right? Your, your chi flow, your energy, your vital force, blood supply, like everything's getting a little bit impinged. It doesn't feel good, okay? But we need to figure out what kind of impingement it is. So the first step is to start to feel it, right? The second step is to lean into it and go, okay, what does this feel like? Now, some people can do this quite easily. Some people, it's it's a bit of a, effort to get there but you want to start to feel the type of pain is it sharp is it dull right already we've got a distinction there right dull pain would be like i'm smashing you in the hand right a sharp pain is like i'm poking you with a, a you know a safety pin or something those are totally different sensations for most people this can teach us things about the body so we're looking at sharp dull right is it fixed in location or does it move around your body is it heavy feeling? Does it feel like a lot of pressure? Does it feel cold? Does it feel hot? Does it burn? Is it tingly? There's so many different kinds of pain. Is it better with pressure? Okay, so here we go. So if you have wandering pains, right? This is classic with like fibromyalgia and some of these other inflammatory conditions. Fibromyalgia is the, the classic one with wandering pains, right? Where it moves around, but it's nowhere near exclusive to fibro. Wandering pains move. So you may wake up one day with a headache and then later that day, it's in your neck. And then the next day, no pain. And then the day after that, it's in your hip, right? All over the place. Now this can be really frustrating with wandering pains because people think I'm going nuts. I thought I had, a, I thought I had headache problems. Then I thought I had neck problem. Now I think I have a hip problem. You go to your doctor, MRIs, everything looks good, okay? You get these pains that come and go, they move around and there's no structural issue. So you know, at least that's good. You don't need surgery or something, right? When you see that, but it's, it's pain that moves around. Now, what is this telling us about our body? How do we interpret that? Okay, I'm glad you asked because we're going to do this for like all of them. Wandering pain is immune. It's telling you there's a problem in your immune system level. Okay, wandering pain. And why do we know this? Because 
there's no structural thing. It's not like you have arthritis right in that joint. It never moves. It always hurts right there. Okay, it moves around all over the place. So why we get this is called nonspecific immune response. And it's basically the body is kind of smoldering. And then the, the inflammation can move very quickly and very easily from place to place in the body. So you can have your immune system kind of hunting, right? And why is it doing that? Why is it hunting? Why is it moving around? Well, because often, more often than not, there's some kind of latent pathogen or hidden pathogen in the body, right? Pathogen or pathogens, multiple. They tend to come in groups. And I know we talk about a lot of these conditions uh, based on like one pathogen. For example, when we talk about Lyme disease, it's a spirochete, right? However, as we expand that, people usually call it Lyme and co because co-infections tend to come along for the ride. Same thing for candida, same thing for EBV, same thing for long haulers. Chronic fatigue syndrome usually has multiple pathogens. It's, it's everywhere. It's like that. There's often a lot of these things that come in as a gang. So the immune system can be a little bit overwhelmed and can be kind of chasing them, right? I'm serious. It works like this. It's like cops and robbers chasing them all over your body. And wherever they are on any given day, that's where you feel the wandering pain. This can be really valuable to understand. Then we know we need to focus with specific methods on immune specificity, getting your immune system to become less of a police chase and more just like a sniper that just takes out what it needs to take out and then you're done with it, right? That's the idea. So wandering pains, immune system, okay? The next one we'll look at, dull pains, especially dull, heavy pains. These tend to be uh, fixed in location. They don't move around so much. And oftentimes it can be the lower body, but not necessarily. And these dull pains tend to correspond to digestive issues. Isn't that cool, right? So now we're starting to map out. We got immune, digestive, uh, neuroadrenal, blood circulation. We're starting to map out the subjective feelings we're getting with what our body's actually asking for. So the dull pains tend to go with the digestive system. And sometimes that can have to do with bacteria and pathogens and uh, overgrowth, right? Gut dysbiosis, these kinds of things. The dull pains don't have to be in the abdomen. Like I said, they could be in the lower body too. Uh, it could be anywhere really. But you start looking at that dull pains and uh, if they're weather sensitive, right? Then that, that gives you a clue too, because that can be from stage one immune and it can also work with the digestive system too. They go a little bit hand in hand. So what do I mean by weather sensitive? Well, if you've ever had this, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but it's like, oh, when it's gonna rain and the barometric pressure changes, my knee starts killing me, okay? There, there's a correspondence there between our, the health of our digestion and those types of pains, right? In Eastern medicine, they start to call it dampness, damp. And a lot of that, the root of that damp, which is pathological fluid and swelling that's in places that it shouldn't be, that's what causes a lot of that achy pain. We have to go after the digestive system to get those to calm down right? With systems, with complex systems like the human body, sometimes just poking like knee jerk, just like poking after the thing you think you should be going after, it doesn't work. You're just opposing symptoms. But instead, you need to work obliquely. Meaning, you know, if you come, come to see some practitioner for knee pain and they start talking to you about your digestion, you know, you think they're crazy. But when we understand the threads, what connects these systems in the body and how internal changes can affect the feelings we get, then we can read those signs and we can start to work obliquely and we can start to get the roots in order taken care of. All right, next one, electric, right? Electric zings, nerves, nerve feelings, and also tension, right? Oh, my jaw is so tense. Oh, my shoulders are so tense. Oh, I'm getting these shooting pains, right? Sometimes some spasms, or even shaking. Shaking is not really a pain, right? When you feel your hand moving, but it's still uh, it's a sensation. And while I'm at it, I'll throw that in as a bonus, right? So some shaking oftentimes goes with stage three, neuroadrenal, okay? Why is that? Well, when you feel that electric firing, right? That's your nerves. That's obvious, okay? When you feel the tension, that's also the nerves keeping a very high amount of power in there. Like you're just charged up. This oftentimes comes from stress as one of the roots, right? So when you see those kinds of pains, oh, tension, right? Eventually the tension, the, the muscles will start to, they'll be so tense, they start to get tired. And then you get this like fatigued pain. Okay, that's a little bit different, uh, but it's the same It's the same process. It's just drawn out now over a long period of time, but it's like tense and tired. Okay, that's not fun either. So jaw, shoulders, those are the common places for that. Sometimes you can get it in your hands. You know, most people it's, it's around there, but it could be anywhere, you know, uh, tense pains like that and the electric zings, those are our signs we're looking at 
neuroadrenal. Now stage four, blood circulation. That's where we get our sharp pains, okay? Sharp, stabby, fixed in location, meaning they don't move around. Now keep in mind, I'm talking about chronic pains, okay? If you have an acute thing, an acute sharp pain, that could be anything, right? That could be like appendicitis, you know? So I'm, I'm obviously I'm not your doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice, all that. You know, you know how this channel works, right? Be responsible for your own health. I'm giving you background information. So sharp pains, where do we get that a lot? Uh, old injuries, okay? Oftentimes people will have like my bad ankle, my bad knee, right? Whatever it is, my bum hip. And usually there's been some kind of injury there, like from a car accident or skiing or whatever it was, right? Something happened, you know, you drop something really heavy on your foot. The blood vessels break. And then what happens is they don't get uh, repaired all that well. Oftentimes, like with Eastern medicine, there's liniments and herbs and things that we use for injury treatment to help things heal better so that you don't get the my bad ankle after effects, right? But without that, especially if you know it's been put in a cast, it's been immobilized, for a long time and as it heals you get this what they call static blood blood stasis that's just kind of sitting in there and you can imagine it basically as like a scab the way when blood leaves a vessel you know it turns into a scab you can imagine like little scabs but inside your body and that's what gives a lot of times the sharp pains so when we start to look at these types of pain all of a sudden now we've got a very rich landscape in the beginning of this video you may have been thinking like jeremy pain is pain okay at first of all why should I care what my pain is trying to tell me? I want it gone, okay? The answer to that is you should care what it's trying to tell you because by giving it what it, what it wants, that's how you get your body to stop creating pain, okay? Just like with a baby crying, right? Oh, yeah, it's obnoxious. I don't want to hear the baby cry. Well, that's they're designed to cry. They're designed to have a sound that you don't want to hear, right? If babies cried and it just sounded like beautiful harp music, like la, 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 right? Then you would never change the diaper. You know, you'd, you'd never uh, feed them, right? Because their cry is so beautiful. Babies cry and it's uncomfortable by design to prompt us to understand what they want and take care of the problem. Pain is your body crying to you. So you have to start to listen to it. You can't just ignore it. You can't just leave the baby with the dirty diaper, right, for a week. That's insane. That's neglect. You're going to jail for that, right? But we can do our bodies. We can we can like ignore our body's pain and just leave it with the equivalent of a dirty diaper for decades. And the only one that suffers is us, right? And then I guess you could argue the people around us suffer because now we're not around and available because we were grumpy and we hate life, right? Because we don't want to do things, you know? So let's not let it get to that point where we neglect it for that long. So for one, yeah, if you want to get rid of pain, you need to be willing to listen to it. You need to be willing to interpret it. And then number two, hey, Jeremy, there, pain is pain, right? No, there's not. There's tons of different kinds of pains. Okay, we did stage one, two, three, four, right? Stage one, wandering pain, immune. Stage two, heavy pains, dullness. That's digestive, right? Stage three, neuroadrenal, electric zings, tension, right? Stage four, sharp, stabby pains that are in a fixed location. That's blood circulation, right? What if I have all these? Well. Don't try to go out of order. If you have all of them, you need to go after your immune system first, okay? And work through. That's why they're numbered. One, two, three, four. And I will give you, actually, here's a bonus. Stage five, right? Jeremy, you said stages one, two, three, four. Well, there's also stage five. It's just a bonus. And most people don't need to do it if they actually go through the system in order. But stage five is boosting, supplementing, right? If you actually have deficiencies and emptiness, then that's when you start to fill those deficiencies, with you know certain herbs that are very nutritional and things like that, right? What kind of pain goes with deficiency? Well, it's the pain that feels better with pressure. It's empty pain. So if you have a headache and you touch it and it makes it feel kind of worse, that's probably not a deficiency pain. A lot of times if you have like a stomach ache or something and then you, you put your hands on it, oh, that feels better, the pressure makes it feel so much better. Well, that's telling you a little bit about the deficiency of that area. In your body. Eastern medicine is all about excess and deficiency, right? The yin and yang of it, how everything kind of moves together. Sometimes there's too much, sometimes there's not enough. We need to understand the system, work through it. So already we've got this mapped out. So now you could do something, for example, like you could keep a pain journal for a week or two or a month and just every day write down what types of pains you're feeling, 
not just your pain scale, because that's what, you know, a lot of doctors, oh, it's a one out of 10, what's your pain, you know, what's your pain scale, one to 10, and, you know, 10 is like excruciating and all this, and you're just rating pain, but you're not differentiating what types of pain you're feeling. So I would offer you, right, there's, there's an activity, there's more, there's plenty more stuff like this, that's what we do in our vault, right, they're very interactive videos, and we work on these things so that you can get a real handle on what's going on with you. That's part of our group and the, the perks for the, the people who join our group. But one thing you could do is just start keeping track of that. And then you look back after a week or a month and start noticing patterns and go, wow, you know, for me, wandering pains and uh, dull aches, you know, all month, that's all I'm seeing. Well, now you have some information about what your body needs, right? Does it need more blood circulation? Probably not. That's stage four. Does it need uh, neuroadrenal care? Probably not. That's stage three, right? Wandering pains are stage one. Dull aches are stage two. You should focus on your immune system and your digestive system, at least right now. That should be your logical next step so you're not throwing everything at your body and hoping something sticks. All right, so there we go. This was a big one. You might have to watch this again. You might have to take notes, all right? This is a, I'm, I'm taking dense, dense information distilled down from thousands of years of medical traditions and I'm presenting it in a short video like this. So I would expect you might have questions, you might wanna watch it again, but you really need to get your hands into this and start embracing unpleasant sensations to get some information so that you can give your body the respect it deserves when it's trying to talk to you, and then you can start to give it what it needs so that it can heal. All right. I hope that helps you in your healing journey and putting together the next piece of your puzzle, and uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.